Hello guys, so good morning. So now we are in module 13 of our discussion in HIS and um, our topic today is clinical data repository. So class, um, every time that you're going to go to your rural health unit or your family medicine doctor, isn't it that every time you will go there, you have to give, you have to provide a form, isn't it, that you're going to write your name, your age, kung ano -ano pa, phone number, family history, the medications, your allergies. So every time na pupunta ka sa doctor's office or you're going to encounter a new doctor, you have to update this once at usually sa papel natin sinusulat and our the doctor secretary is aligaga looking for your file or isn't it that every time that you go to the emergency room kailangan yung mom mo yung watcher mo or ikaw magpipil up ng form at kung irerecommend ka naman they will recommend you to a specialist so from a primary healthcare doctor they will recommend you to a specialist. Same thing, guys, isn't it that you're going to to write again, once again, your name, your age, and the sort of that. And so, maraming documents ang na-accumulate talaga when, you, when we are going in hospitals, in a private doctor's office. However, class, ang discussion natin ngayon is clinical data repository that they already solved it that every time that you're going to go to your primary care office, so yung, doc, yung mga family medicine doctor nyo, all you have to do is verify the info if it's correct. And now you're going to, to see your primary care physician, yung doctor nyo usually. Um, tapos, class, kung narecommend na naman sa specialist office, um, instead of writing so many forms again, they just have to go to your clinical data repository wherein you're just going to verify kung tama yung information mo na andon and now you're ready to see the specialist. And so they already solve actually the, the documents, uh, so many documents that patients tend to fill up every time they go to a doctor's office and it is called your clinical data repository. So this um, CDR is where they consolidate all the patient information. And class, this is already used in the state of Washington in the U.S. That in the state of Washington, that the different doctors who are in your primary care, care special, your primary care doctors, your specialist doctors class, they share a consolidated portal or repository or a storage area of all the patients in the state of Washington. Yan, ang galing. So, class, yun ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon. Clinical data repos repository. So, it's a real-time database. So, when we say real-time, when a health professional will modify something in the um, patient file, it will be um, updated in real-time. Yan, database that consolidates, so it collects all the data from a variety of clinical sources. So from different information systems, example, in the state of Washington, to present a unified view of a single patient. So even though the, the patient will go to different clinical facilities, once it's input, the data is input in your clinical data repository, it will show a unified view, a consolidated, a cohesive view of, the, of all the data regarding the patient. Data regarding the patient. So because why do we need a CDR? Yan. Sa Pilipinas, wala pa CDR actually. I mean, it's not really as... Um, not used in the practice yet. So different new hospitals utilizes varying electronic health records or health information systems from different HIS providers. So yun yung problema class that sometimes it's very difficult to consolidate all the information because this information are coming from different providers. Yan. So pwedeng Gamit ni BGH, HOMIS, gamit ni SLU, um, 
base box yan they they they're using different his provider so class there is still a gap in clinical data exchange there are so many factors why this hospitals this clinician do not really um do not really join in in data exchange. Hindi sila masyadong nagpa-participate. Why? Because there's so many things about privacy, about data privacy, about confidentiality, ganyan. So actually, this should be backed up by a good public policy para ma-encourage mag-share ng information nitong mga doctors, nitong mga clinicians natin. It should, they should be um, protected by a public policy and actually they should be should they they should have um securities um that are in check para sobrang safe talaga yung mga information ng mga pasyente so i just want to say that class ang nangyayari ngayon hindi pa rin talaga smooth ang data exchange natin just like in covid-19 tracker many of the information are still delayed because we don't have a consolidated um storage of information regarding COVID-19. So, we just depend on the hospitals yan, reporting to DOH how many were positive on that day. Ganyan. So, dapat before 5 p.m. ng araw na yon, dapat lahat ng hospital, lahat ng laboratory dito sa Baguio is magre-report sa DOH natin in Baguio City. Something like that. Kaya medyo hindi real-time ang pag-update ng COVID-19 tracker. Actually, delay kasi biglang, mapapansin nyo, biglang tataas yung cases ng recoveries kasi ang raming hindi na-record from the previous days. Parang ganun. Diba? Meron nga tayong mga fresh cases and new cases because there's still a gap. There's still um, a delay in exchanging data because we do not, because we use different plat platforms because of the different attitudes of health professionals when it comes to sharing data. Actually, maraming factors. Yan. But um, in Washington, they're using CDR as a solution. And CDR is functional in, solu in Washington because it is backed up by a public policy. May legislation, may batas na nagbaback up sa um, CDR nila. So, it's... And... So, hoping this would be possible one day here in the Philippines, that there would be healthcare, healthcare data inter, interoperability, interoperability, and the ability of different information technology systems and software applications to communicate, exchange data, and use the information that has been exchanged. Yeah. And so, we want to promote the exchange of data because the more data you have, yeah, and the better the decision making, especially in health programs. So class, let's just um, discuss your terminologies because in your module, I placed clinical data repository and clinical warehouse as actually or and or. Parang magka, magkapareho sila. But for this, the sake of this discussion, medyo ano, lagyan natin sila ng difference, okay? So, when we say repository, yan, a place or building or container where things may be stored, ang repository. Pag sinabi naman natin, a warehouse, hindi ko kasi nalagay class, warehouse class, it is a larger place, building, or container where things may be stored. Pag warehouse, mas malaki. So, pag sinabi natin data repository, it is a storehouse in which data is stored and managed. It is used to organize data in a centralized manner. And so, finally, clinical data repository. Yan. So, the patient information is collected from various clinical information system. Yan. So, napaganda ng gamit ng clinical data repository. And when we say data warehouse, yan, sometimes yan, they use it inter interchangeably. Clin or clinical data warehouse is a bigger, a larger massive computing or and storage system that can combine information from several sources into one comprehensive database. So, for the sake of discussion, Data warehouse, mas malaki siya. Yan. And data warehouses, um, 
is bigger. So, clinical data repository is under the umbrella of data warehouse. Since mas malaki ang data warehouse, parte ng data warehouse ang clinical data repository. Yan. So, example of data warehouses class are is your cloud data. So, mamaya, I'll, I, I have a technical um, definition for cloud data warehouses. I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar with the cloud already. So, these are services na these services from Microsoft, Oracle, Microsoft Azure, Google, that they allow you to store, to store, um, to store different files, yan, from different platforms. So, these are paid services where you store dun sa G Suite natin, class. So, I'm glad nagkaroon tayo ng G Suite wherein it has a limitless storage. So, nakatipid ako ng subscription from um, Apple Cloud kasi, di ba, you have to pay for a gigabyte of storage every month. Yan, sa Apple. Ganyan. So, buti may libreng sa G Suite. So, let's just have a differentiation between CDRs and your data warehouses. So, sabi ko, di ba, data warehouses, I, clinical data repositories are actually smaller entities than your data warehouses. Your data warehouses carries, sila ang nag-carry ng mga clinical data repositories. So, in a data warehouse, there could be more than one clinical data repository. So, when we say clinical data repository, they are data-oriented, focused on individual patients. So, they collect the data from an information system from a hospital. So, it is focused on an individual patient. When we say data warehouse, yung mas malaki na, they are aggregated data summarized to decision-making levels. Yeah. So, it's not as detailed anymore. It is summarized. It is shown in a graphical presentation. Ganun. Mas broad kasi ang data warehouse. Next, users can read and write to the database. So, unless you are a qualified user, so you have access, yan. so ano ka, you are an authorized user, I mean. So, pwede mong i-update yung mga information sa clinical data repository. But in data warehouses class, wala kang karapatang mag-edit. So, if you're working inside a data warehouse, wala kang karapatang mag-edit ng data because the, the editing of data is is by your authorized um, users only. Example, your health professionals, your doctors. You know? So, you could only read, read only lang. Next, real-time updated from OS. Yan. So, so it's, all, it's every, every time that there's an update, it happens real-time because it's closer to the user. However, your data warehouses, you don't update it all the time. Yan. So it's periodically updated because it's a big, a big storage of um, data. What else? Your clinical data repositories are integrated clinical data. So it's coming from different sources and it's focused in clinical data only. But when it comes to data warehouses, not only clinical, but also operational. So, yung mga administrative data, yung mga financial data of your facilities, yan. mas broad kasi mas malaki. Next, stores data in its most current updated form. And here, data warehouses, time variant stores data and time. So, it takes time for it to be updated. Yan. Medyo matagal kasi masyadong malaki. It's updated periodically. Just like your COVID-19 tracker class, they don't update it real time. They uh, update it, I think, after 5 p.m. Once the different regions has already submitted their data for the day. Next, data is fed from clinical systems, so different information system, from the laboratory, from rural health units. And next, for warehouses, data is fed from clinical, financial, and administrative systems. So the scope of data warehouses are so broad. So it, it, it also holds the financial data, administrative data, 
So class, let me just give you an idea. So actually, your Microsoft, your FB are building this big infrastructures. Yeah, this big infrastructures wherein this infrastructure holds the different data. So class, I know that we already have a cloud. So this cloud is an internet storage for us users, but as for Microsoft, yeah, to uh, accommodate, accommodate all the all the ones who are um, purchasing internet storage, kailangan nila ng physical server. So, gumagawa talaga sila ng class ng malalaking infrastructures. Microsoft Data Center in Dublin, Ireland, um, said this is 70 acres. So, hindi ko ma-imagine kung anong 70 acres. Sabi niya, it's less than 300,000 square meters. Class, ganun kalaki. So, when we say a square meter, so, isang square meter, yan. So, imagine nyo, 300,000 square meters itong data center nila. So, this are, inside it are your physical servers wherein it has the capacity to, to store so much data. So, here is, in, is the FB, FB data center in Oregon class. Sabi naman nila ito is seven, kung hindi ako nagkakamil class, seven million square foot. Naman to, seven million square foot. Class, grabe yung Facebook data center. Um, you can search this in Facebook engineering. Doon ka na search. Class, these are the different centers, data centers of Facebook. So, they have, ito yon yung Printville, Oregon. Na, tapos, ito yung napanood ko yung may video sila sa New Mexico, Los Lunas, New Mexico. Class, ang lalaking data center. And itong Los Lunas, Los Lunas sa New Mexico class, the... Yung pag-build daw nila dito is worth 1 billion. 1 billion worth of projects. Sabi ko, like, tumaas yung balahibo ko that, wow, that Facebook is such a powerful company. Plus, that it has the capacity to spend billions of dollars for their infrastructure. And, ayun naman, when I was reading about this Los Lunas project in New Mexico, that it's so big, guys, and hope they're i'm hoping that they would really that they would really commit to their plans that they said that they will use renewable energy in powering this big plants class ang lalaking mga i know data centers and class isn't it that data is the new gold so the more data that you collect the more powerful you can be yeah so that's how powerful facebook is that's only one company eh? we haven't seen google we don't, haven't seen amazon we haven't seen microsoft that bit the span of it hello grabe 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 to mga data centers na to Ayan. so they can be <coughs> tawag naman class data centers so what are the functions <coughs> of your CDR. So collect and index clinical data contents for specific uses. So they collect and index it. So they manage it through alphabetical order or per facility. Ganyan. They connect and aggregate. Yan. So though your your hospitals have different platforms, yun yung kaya niyang isolve class. Kahit iba-iba yung mga platform ng mga health information system, kahit iba-iba yung mga laboratory information system that they use, they could, they could still aggregate yan. They could still collate all the information. The data is standardized into a cohesive format. We have interoperability. So, it solves the problem on data sharing. So, yun, sana mag, mas mag-share pa tayo ng data kasi nga, napahalaga nun sa, sa public health. And comprehensive understanding of patients' medical history. Since we have collated all the information from the patient over a span of years, over multiple visits, edi eh, magkakaroon talaga, makikita natin yung mga trends ng ng pasyente natin. Yan, mas madaling makita yung mga trends, patterns, yan, the effectiveness of the treatment therapy. Yan, napakaganda. Okay. 
so in Washington, so meron nga silang CDR, ang tawag One Health Worth, yan, Health Information Exchange, wherein so, the different certified electronic health records from different um, hospitals and different providers will input their information in a protected cloud. So, even though that kahit wala kang EHR, kahit portal lang meron sa inyo or Excel, yan, yun yung maganda sa health, kahit wala kang EHR daw, you can just upload it in their cloud, yan, and it will be submitted to a clinical data repository. So, CDR aggregates clinical data from different organizations and create longitudinal patient records. So, when we say longitudinal patient records, yan, you could, these records incorporate information over time and across systems. So, Longitudinal patient records allow you to have a holistic view on the patient's medical history. So basically, makikita mo parang isang big photo album of the patient's records. Yan. So yun nga, sabi ko yung cloud. So cloud storage is a cloud computing model that stores data on the internet through a cloud computing provider. So there should be a provider. So tayo, Google is a G Suite natin. You can use Apple. You can, soft, you can use Microsoft Azure. Yan. It's delivered on demand. Yan. Sabi niya, it eliminates buying and managing your own data storage infrastructure. So as you can see, FB, Microsoft has building their own data storage infrastructure. The advantage of this, yan, of building your own infrastructure is that you own the data. Class, you own the data. And class, many banks, many car car um, companies which has very classified information, yung may mga top secret information, they still ought to build their own data storage infrastructure. Sabi natin, kanyari yung mga Pentagon, yung mga ganyan, yung mga CIA, that they still have their data storage infrastructure, especially if you are carrying very high classified, very high sensitive data. And ang disadvantage class ng cloud storage that when you when you when you use cloud storage your data is now out there yan so if there are security breach pwedeng ma-breach yung information niyo diba parang maram dahil daw na breach ang cloud may time na parang nagsilabasan yung mga nudes ng mga celebrities or mga kung ano ano pa Ayan. So, the disadvantage, I think the cloud is very secure right now, but there could be a total system failure, di mo na masabi, and the information is out there when it's in the cloud. So, be careful what you are uploading in the cloud. And so, your CDR features, it leverages standards for sharing clinical summaries. Ayan. So, it maximizes the use of your standards. Ayan. So, that... The, the different um, health professionals could share your data. Next, supports clinical data exchange without similar platforms. So, I think yan yung isa sa mga pinaka-advantage niya. Kahit anong EHR man ang gamitin mo, yan, kahit anong, kahit kanino galing na provider, they could consolidate it. Long galing. Aggregates clinical and administrative data into longitudinal patient record. A physician could study trends over the course of multiple patient visit. Yan. Even though the, the patient did not visit him, makikita niya pa rin. Yun yung ano class eh. Yun yung maganda sa CDR. Because for me, I go to, dati, I go to my um, lung doctor sa pulmonologist ko. Yung pangalan yun, yung doctor ko sa pulmonologist, yung doctor ko sa endocrinology, endocrinology ganyan, yung, doc, yung OB ko, ganyan. Hindi naman sila nagsashare ng data. So, ibig sabihin, they could, they could only assess me based on the things that na pinacheck up ko sa kanila. So, they did not see the, my other medical history. Ganyan. So, magkakaiba sila ng alam tungkol sa akin. Of course, my pulmonology only knows about me regarding my lungs. My endocrinology only knows me about my, regarding my thyroid. My OB only knows me regarding my ovary. Ganun, magkakahilo. Lai, diba? So, to, 
we need this. We need this. <laughs> Next, supports access to integrated patient record without an age or through a clinical portal. So even though you only have a portal, kaya kaya ng CDR yan. Scalability yan. So if there are additional group of patients somewhere, biglang may may maad na patients yan, you could scale it because it's under actually a data warehouse yan. It you could increase the the storage and reduces the need for chart reviews associated with quality report reporting so you don't have to find the charts anymore because it's already placed in your cdr yeah. so the different components yeah. so everything <laughs> that one could collect from a doctor's office or an emergency room and then hospital so Ayon class, so how does CDR maintains privacy and security? So CDR complies with state and federal security and privacy requirements. So according to the um, Washington State, yan, kasi nga sila yung meron, so they comply to the laws of the land. Next, CDR has been externally audited by HIPAA. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. So this law protects the sharing of data information, protects the confidentiality of data information, ganyan. So it is audited by HIPAA. So based on US, ha? and specific data access policies are determined by health priority authorities. So people who have access are only the ones who are authorized. Yan. So the level of staff CDR access is based on their role. So class, let's, let, let's just like what I said, as a medical technologist working in the laboratory, I could only access the information regarding laboratory information. Yan. Because that's the only, um, the only, the, because there are restrictions set. There are restrictions set for the um, for the use of information systems. So you have limited access. So if you are in the billing section, syempre ang ma ma access mo lang is about billing. You will not access the results from radiology and so on. And ha, so you can you have limited access based on your role. So just like the, um, even though that you are the CEO, yeah, actually, they will not show you, you won't ha have access to all information unless they have allowed you. Yeah. Saka actually, you are too busy to look at, to look at every um, data. Mas maganda, pag napunda na sa CEO, it has already been summarized. Yan, mga report na lang binabasa nila. NCDR data is classified as normal, restricted, and very restricted. Um, back then, isn't it that we classified our information into high sensitivity, moderate sensitivity, and public, parang ganun, something like that. So, if it's very restricted, then there should be increased security that are in place, something like that. Yan. So, a user may only access a certain type, certain types of information and use particular types of queries from a given information system depending on the restrictions which were set during the integration process. So, the different users have different access. So, example, if you're the physician, then you could only access your, your patient's data. So, if someone is not your patient, of course, you cannot access them. So, and finally, class, ito na tayo sa data visualization. So, ability to represent the data in graphical format is very helpful for us, di ba? Just like you, class, kung may, kung may handout, if it's in tabulated form, is it? If it's in graph form, isn't it that it's so it's so much easier to understand instead of giving you ano paragraphs and paragraphs of messages, di ba? Mas maganda pag we have something to visualize. It it will help us analyze trends and patterns, especially if you're a doctor. It helps in simplifying. So much information. Yan. So, yung pag mas madaling basahin, di ba? Mas madaling interpret. And actually, 
Um, in data visualization, there are also filters. Yeah, to filter or change the level of information. Let me give you an example. So here is our reliable COVID-19 tracker. So as you notice, class, in this graph, it shows the um, weekly cases by date of onset of illness. Yeah. So here are the number of weekly cases. Yeah. From March 1 to December 1. So notice that in around July to August, there was a increase of cases of COVID-19. But now we're heading to November and December. Yan, bumababa na yung cases. And class, we could choose filters. Yan. So filters will filter out the different um, information. So instead of weekly, pindutin mo tong daily, edi daily na yung makikita mong information. Or ayaw mo makita yung cases, gusto mo makita yung recovery. So just tick that and the information will change, di ba? Or if not, you can go, you can scroll down and you don't want to, sh to see the nationwide cases. You only want to see um, region 12. So you could click region 12 only. So these are filters, yeah. So enables, that enables people to have a scenario analysis or you want to know only the females, kung sinong may COVID, ilang mga babae, or ilang mga lalaki, ganyan. So, there are filters set for you to visualize your data, ganyan, according to your liking. Ganyan. So, thank you for listening, guys. I'll see you again.